Hi guys, Dr. Davin Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today I'm going to give you a hint as to what to do or what to try before you see your dermatologist. Now when you go see your dermatologist, most normal dermatologists won't go, hey, you know what, go on this, go on Accutane, it's good for you. Most normal dermatologists, I can say normal, like normal dermatologists, we try to avoid this like anything. This is the last resort treatment. This is not the first resort treatment, this is the last. Every time when I used to treat acne, I used to cringe every time I prescribed this because yes, there are lots of side effects and if you read the product information on Accutane, it's everything from hair loss to depression to liver function changes to um, headaches to visual impairment to night loss vision to everything. Name it, you've got it. So, most of us try to avoid this and this is what you can do to avoid us prescribing Accutane to you. So am I a fan of it? No, but yes, there are certain times when patients do need this drug. For example, if you have cystic acne or you have acne that's recalcitrant to all other treatments. This five minute video will teach you ways of which how you can actually avoid taking Accutane. So let's start from basics. The first thing you want to do is look up your makeup regime. So I'm not going to be sexist here, it's guys and girls. Look, for girls, first thing you want to do is make sure you guys, act, well you girls, actually ladies I should say, correctly, use something called non-comedogenic. Uh, a good makeup is something like this, which is a mineral makeup because it's paraben free, it's fragrance free, and it's non-comedogenic. It, it doesn't give you as good coverage, yes I know, compared to a liquid foundation, or BB cream, but it is easier on your skin and it lets your pores breathe. If you get less uh, clogging of your pores, you get less acne. So look at non-comedogenic. That's what you're looking for, non-comedogenic products. So that goes not only to your um, makeup, but that goes across the board to everything, including your everyday sunscreen. So whatever sunscreen you use, whether it be a low-end sunscreen, a cheap and nasty one like this, I shouldn't say cheap and nasty, but cheap and effective, or a higher-end brand like um, Neutrogena, or even a higher-end brand like La Roche-Posay, make sure they don't clog your pores. And look, realistically, 95% of sunscreens nowadays do not clog your pores. Okay, next thing we want to do is exfoliate. So, you can buy yourself one of these at Clarisonic, or you can use a exfoliating pad. The other cheap thing to do is actually buy yourself an exfoliator. Look behind me, what do we have here? These are all exfoliators, they're called chemical peels. Yes, you can do these chemical peels at home, but it's much easier if you buy something like a Neutrogena 2% beta hydroxy acid, which is a salicylic acid. So when you're looking at the ingredients as to what you want to exfoliate with, look for the terms salicylic acid or beta hydroxy acid. Neutrogena makes a good one, it's cheap, it's around 10 bucks and it works. So the second thing to do apart from uh, using over-the-counter um, exfoliators or your Clarisonic um, is to actually use chemical peels. So most salons, uh, beauty spas, aestheticians and even dermatology clinics do offer chemical peels and chemical peels um, offer the advantage of um, first of all, skin rejuvenation, secondly, unclogging pores, thirdly, minimizing pores, and fourthly, it can actually decrease acne. And the peels that we normally go for are generally beta hydroxy acid peels over alpha hydroxy acids. So we're looking at things like salicylic acid because it's anti-inflammatory, it unclogs your pores as well, you can use lactic acid as well. So these are the peels that we can go for, we can go for mandelic acid, we can go also for alpha hydroxy acids or glycolic acids. So all of these methods, these exfoliating methods, so you can go manual or you can go chemical can actually help. Another thing we can try are light treatment. So light treatment works because it actually targets the porphyrins within the bacteria. Uh, light, once again, can be offered over the counter so you can buy yourself a Neutrogena light mask. In fact, there are even phone apps that you put on there which shine blue and red light because those are the action spectrums at which it kills the bacteria. So something like this is going to set you back around 50 bucks US, probably get on Amazon for $40 or cheaper. Uh, does it work? Yes, it does. Does it work as well compared to our commercial grade products? Obviously not. You know, a $70,000 low level emission laser device is not going to work as well. It's going to work a lot better, should I say, compared to this. When do I laser acne? Well, generally speaking, on occasions. 
So I laser acne if there is evidence of PIE, or post-inflammatory erythema, which is a form of acne scars, also called um, grade two scars. Yeah, so grade two scars, PIE, or macular erythema. So if I see those kind of scars with acne, I use my trusty pulse dye laser, and that's when I laser acne, because the pulse dye laser at 595 is very close to um, the action spectrum of the porphyrins, which is around 630 odd nanometers. And the laser itself not only treats the acne scar, not only reduces inflammation, reduces the redness, but kills the bacteria. So that's the only circumstance I personally use a laser to treat um, acne. So what other things can we do to actually reduce um, acne before seeing a dermatologist? Well, I realize in the US nowadays you can buy yourself super strong generation two retinoids called different. I know there's a huge price difference. In Australia, you buy something like this for around $25. Uh, in the US, I think it's around $50, $60. Some, leave your comments here. I, I don't know how much it is. All I know is that it saves you the trip to a dermatologist. Imagine going to see a dermatologist paying God knows how much it is in the US, but in Australia, $200. And then they prescribe this to you, which you can buy over the counter in the US. So start yourself with a retinoid. If you can get yourself a retinoid, it'll be awesome. You can mix it as well with alpha hydroxy acids. Just be very careful, titrate it. In other words, maybe use retinoid three to four times a week and then add something like this, an alpha hydroxy acid two to three times a week because this is an exfoliator. You're exfoliating, this acts as an exfoliator as well, and it reduces oil production. So try a retinoid before going on uh, proper prescription medications. Now, one of the biggest, I guess, success stories in acne management, something called Proactive. You see it in every shopping center, they've made a bucket load of selling really cheap uh, bleaching agents. Now, instead of going to um, buy from Proactive or even acne.org, I'm not saying their products are bad, all I'm saying is that you're paying a lot more compared to generic benzyl peroxide. So if you look at BPO, benzyl peroxide, you can have a mild strength or you can have a moderate strength and you're paying about $2 difference for um, double the strength. So the active ingredient in all of this, whether it be the acne.org products or whether it be the, um, uh, the products you buy from um, Proactive is benzyl peroxide. And what's benzyl peroxide? It's a cheap bleaching agent. So you can use 5% for extra strong, or what they'd usually promote, 2.5%. So these cost about $10 instead of paying double as much as what you would pay, or even triple as much for a proactive. Okay, so these are all tricks that you can buy, save yourself money, and also um, treat your acne. What other tricks can you use before seeing a dermatologist? Well, you can ask your primary health care practitioner to prescribe you retinoids because these are not um, regulated. In other words, just a GP can prescribe you. Tazarotene or Retrieve because they can help with your acne and you can do and you can combine that and titrate that with your other things. But make sure you be very careful with how you actually mix all of these retinoids together because they can have side effects like uh, dryness for skin and skin irritation. So more on the retinoid video. Uh, up there on that link. Okay, what else can we use? So we haven't gone to natural remedies. Do I believe in natural remedies? Absolutely. Um, it's been shown now that tea tree oil, so uh, many years it's been dismissed, but an Australian paper by the Australasian College of Dermatologists, a few of my colleagues down in um, Melbourne, I think, or South Australia, Publish a paper, a very good paper last year, in regards to tea tree oil and how that is effective in the management of acne. You can also alter your diet. For many years, people go, yeah, acne is not related to the diet. Uh uh, completely wrong. So, the Americans have actually shown, American Academy of Dermatology Journal, the JAD, Blue Journal, we call it, um, many years ago have shown the relationship between dairy products and acne. It works via IGF-1 receptors, so we know how it actually works. So dairy products and processed products are bad for you. So if you drink milk and eat lots of cheese and you get the flare up in your acne, there you go, there's your culprit. So certainly diet can play a role. The other things as well, supplements. What supplements can help? Uh, it's been proven that zinc, so zinc sulfate can actually help with acne because it can 
increase your immunity and change your um, the way your immune system behaves to actually fight off the P acnes or bacteria. So zinc sulfate, um, certainly through a health food shop, do I advocate that? Absolutely. So those are a couple of natural remedies, okay? And the other thing is what well, we mentioned, light. Um, you notice when you go on that beach holiday, what happens? Your back knee improves, your facial acne improves. Why does that happen? Because number one, you're less stressed, but number two, the beach holiday gives you that sunlight, and that sunlight in the 400 and 600 nanometer, spec nanometer spectrum will actually kill your P acnes on your face and on your back and actually improves your acne. So certainly sunlight, but hey guys, I'm not saying go out there sunbake. All I'm saying is that um, the moderate use of sunlight, maybe 10 minutes, four or five times a week, uh, can actually decrease your acne lesions. Um, plus it's nice to be in the sun. But just be sun smart, okay? Okay guys, I hope that helps. Um, dermatologists do then um, have other drugs that we can prescribe, but they can prescribe, I don't prescribe drugs, I'm a laser dermatologist, but certainly they can prescribe, apart from taking the dreaded Accutane. So for females, they can look into your hormone profile, and certainly when you're looking at certain oral contraceptive pills, the ones to look for include things that have cyprotone acetate, for example, Diane or Estelle or um, even this, Yaz, which does not contain cyprotone acetate, but contains something called drospirinone. How do these work? Basically, it's this. You've got an oil gland, you've got hormones. The hormones bind to your oil gland, activate your oil gland, you get a zit. I've simplified that. It's more complex, but they're receptors. But what these do is it stops this from binding to that. So they're called anti-androgens, okay? Now, finally, I'll touch on this last topic. I know um, there's a whole group of you out there, 40 to 50 year old women who go, hey, um, I'm sending my teenagers to see dermatologists, but I'm getting acne as well. And that's a unique, form to a unique type of acne. It's called adult, female jawline hormonal acne. It's all in the description, guys. It's adult, female, jawline hormonal acne. That's a whole new topic, 10 minutes worth of discussion, um, and there's a special way we can tr treat that. Uh, stay tuned for that in my next video in the next coming months. Okay, guys, I hope you liked that video. Uh, it's a really, really quick one on what to do, what to try before you actually go down the um, Accutane pathway. Um, if a dermatologist does prescribe this to you, chances are he or she is going to be a responsible dermatologist, monitor you for side effects, give you hints, tips and tricks. And if they don't, you can click on this video up here where five of our dermatologists actually tell you what their favorite hints are in regards to Accutane. But if they do prescribe this for you, it's for a reason because there is a subgroup of patients where we try everything. Everything from chemical peels to antibiotics to hormone therapy to lasers to light to photodynamic therapy, hormone manipulation, dietary measures, de-stress, the whole lot. And we cannot treat acne because um, you have a genetic propensity and this can help. I'm not for it, I'm just saying it's out there. So I hope you like that guys, hope you like that video. Please, if you know someone who's uh, considering taking this or has acne, send them this video because it could be helpful. Please chime your thoughts, tell us what works for you, what's your favorite skincare regime, um, and I'll see you the same place, same time next week. And please remember to subscribe. Bye for now.